know, it is true that our relationship with God can only be described as either progressing or retrogressing. Ito ay nag improve or bumababa at sumasadsad. Walang middle ground pag pinag-usapan natin. Pag kinamusta tayo, kumusta na ang iyong personal na relasyon sa Panginoon? Wala pong sagot na steady lang. Yung progress ng relationship natin sa Panginoon or the opposite of it is determined solely doon sa kung paano natin inaalagaan yung relasyon na ito na meron tayo sa Kanya. And by that relationship, I mean if we are knowing God more and more each day, knowing he, who He is, what He is like, His character, His nature, and His attributes. You know, during the classical period, ang Athens po, which is the capital city of Greece, was the center of learning. Dito po nagmula ang katulad nila Plato, ni Socrates, at ni Aristotle. They were very much instrumental sa kaalaman natin ngayon sa disiplina ng filosofiya. And when we talk about the discipline of philosophy, this asks about the meaning of life, ang kahulugan ng buhay at ang kahulugan kung bakit nandito po tayo. And philosophy tries to answer the question, who am I? Sino ba ako? What am I here for? Or is there a supernatural being somewhere out there in the universe? Or is there a God? Forward during the time of the Apostle Paul, he referred to Athens as a very religious city. And by being religious, he meant that Athens has a place for all the gods, even for an unknown god. And in their attempt to make sure na yung kanilang relasyon sa Panginoon ay nagpa-progress, they even made an altar for a god whom they do not know for the fear that they might be missing out on a possible unknown god. They were zealous, but their zeal in worshiping God was very much misplaced. Their zeal was misplaced dahil in their attempt to worshiping God, they became idolatrous. Their zealousness led them to idolatry. In a book by Ellis Fitzpatrick entitled Idols of the Heart, Learning to Long for God Alone, he, she said, Idols aren't just stone statues. No, idols are the thoughts desires, longings, and expectations that we worship in the place of the true God. Idols cause us to ignore the true God in search of what we think we need. At kapag ginawa natin idolo yung mga desires natin, yung mga longings natin, yung expectations natin sa buhay, and we ignore the true God in search of what we think we need, we make a God out of convenience. Gusto lang natin na nandiyan ang Panginoon because He is convenient for all of us. You see, when we talk about idols, anything that takes the rightful place of God in our lives is considered as an idol. And idols come in many forms. It does not have to be an altar of statues, but it could be money. It could be fame, desires, thoughts, plans, dreams, possessions, or even people. It could be our idols. Anything that we place above God in our lives is an idol in and of itself. When our zeal for the one true God wanes, pag ito ay dumalagpak, and we become more passionate of the things other than God, that is idolatry. Ngayong umaga po, usapang puso tayo, kumusta po ang inyong pagiging masigasig, ang inyong zealousness sa Panginoon. Kumusta po ang pagiging masigasig natin Sa paglilingkod sa kanya. Our text this morning is found in the book of Acts chapter 17 verses 22 to 28a. Sa aklat po ng mga gawa, kapitulo labing pito, versikulo dalawampu't dalawa hanggang dalawampu't walo. And here, we will be meditating upon this word with the hope that our passion, our zeal, yung ating kasigasigan sa lahat ng ating ginagawa, will be solely focused only on Christ himself. Good morning po. Today's word is entitled, Zealous, Refocusing Our Passion for the One True God, from Acts chapter 17, verses 22 to 28a. Angin po tayo. Lord, as we ponder upon your truth, grant us humility. Give us wisdom. Give us of our iniquities. I speak before your people, Lord. Teach me 
to speak up and to shut up so that only your word will be delivered. As we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Again, our text is found in the book of Acts chapter 17 verses 22 to 28a. Uh, inaanyayahan ko po ang bawat isa na tumayo. Namimiss ko po kasi yung ganitong paraan ng pagbabasa ng salita ng Panginoon. So what we're gonna do this morning is for us to have a responsive reading. I'll be reading verse 22, tas babasahin niyo po yung kasunod na verse. So salitan po tayo. And then sa my last verse po, we will be reading verse 28a all together. Igagayad po tayo ni Justin para hindi tayo sabog-sabog magbasa <laughs> ng pagkakasunod-sunod natin. Again, this is Acts chapter 17, verses 22 to 28a. I'll be reading verse 22. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. Kayo naman po. Brother, walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship. I even found an altar with this inscription, Unknown God, so you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of sabay, us. Sabay po tayo. For in him we live, live and, and move and, and have, have our, our being. being. May God bless the reading of his word. Makakaupo na po tayong lahat. Tell us refocusing our passion for the one true God. You know, in this text, ang atin pong Apostol Pablo ay nagsasalita sa harap ng mga tao na nakalimutan na ang Panginoon. These people knew nothing about the one true God. Athens at this time was already given to so much idolatry. That's why they have countless and countless of gods. They do not know the God of the Old Testament, much less do they know the God of who is the God of, who, who we worship at the moment, who is Jesus Christ. They were, were zealous, they were zealous in their religion, but their zealousness is very much misplaced. At verse 22a, ang sabi dito ni Apostle Paul, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. The Athenians were very zealous. They were very sincere in their religiosity, but they were sincerely wrong. Remember that this was a speech na ibinigay ni Apostol Pablo sa Eropagus. Ito pong hill ng Eropagus, dito po nagde-decide yung parang Supreme Court nung kanilang panahon. This was also the same place where Socrates ay napag na nila na siya ay kitili ng kanyang buhay dahil he was, he has been philosophizing with the youth during his time. Tinatanong niya ang mga kabataan, dapat ba talaga tayong sumunod sa gobyerno? With those questions, maraming mga kabataan nung kanyang panahon ang nagtatanong, oo nga, no, dapat ba sumusunod talaga tayo sa gobyerno? And during that time, what you have to understand is that kailangang mapanatili ng gobyerno ang kanilang kapangyarihan. Kaya ang ginawa nila kay Socrates, sila ay kanilang pinatay. But hindi naman itong pinatay na silya elektrika, kundi pinainom nila si Socrates ng poison. That ended the life of one of the classical philosophers during that time. Kaya nga po, doon nausin yung sinasabi, kapag pilosopo ka, namamatay ka. Ah, doon ang galing po iyon. You know, this was a speech given by the Apostle Paul. Because people were thinking, he's a blabber. Salita siya ng salita tungkol sa isang Diyos na hindi naman nila kilala. Kaya what these people did was to bring him to the hill of Areopagus. At doon, pinagsalita siya tungkol sa sinasabi niyang the unknown God. Here is Areopagus, and this is where the Supreme Court on their day decide on the political, philosophical, and even criminal cases of their time. And here was Paul preaching the unknown God to the Athenians that they might be redeemed from their religiosity and know the one true God. In verse 23, ang sabi dito, For as I walked around and looked carefully at, the, at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this 
is what I am going to proclaim to you. You see, religiosity does not equate to a sound understanding of who God is. Kahit na gano tayo karelihiyoso, kahit na gano karami yung ginagawa natin, that does not equate to the fact that we know God. Even if we ask if we are actually close to God. They say that ignorance is a bliss. It's so for sometimes. But what we have to understand that ignorance also could be the root of all problems. When we are ignorant of the God we worship, that could be the beginning of our own destruction. That we will just be religious without even thinking whether we are actually looking and searching and longing, praying for the will of God. You see, the Athenians in their religiosity were very zealous. They were zealously wrong. They were zealously wrong because they were religious, yes. They were very religious doing things here and there. But their religiosity did not point to the one true God. Instead, they became more and more idolatrous. We learn from this passage so that we will not fall prey in the pit of idolatry. Kung paalala sa atin bilang mga anak ng Panginoon, when our religiosity keeps us from knowing that one true God, para hindi tayo mag-fall prey into being idolatrous, we have to keep ourselves in check. We always have to be on guard on these things. Tatlong bagay po. Una, our forgotten confession. Pangalawa, our misplaced passion. And lastly, our disregarded actions. You know, the Athenians, as I said a while ago, were idolatrous people. But were they believers of Christ? Definitely not. They are. The sad thing is that even with our confession that Jesus is Lord, we can still despise our faith if we are not careful. Perhaps the reason could be one of these two. Number one, we have, con- we have forgotten the confession of our faith, or we have become so busy that in our business, that keeps us away from our faith. We say that we have forgotten the confession of our faith. We have forgotten that we are sinners saved by grace, and that it is only through Jesus Christ that we are able to walk daily in this confession. Others, we have become so busy that our business is keeping us away from our confession, from our faith. You know, one of my personal realizations this past couple of weeks, napakahirap po na mabuhay na napakalayo sa kalooban ng Panginoon. I am pleading to you this morning, brothers and sisters, kahit gano'n tayo kabisi, yakapin natin at panghawakan ang buhay na meron tayo sa Panginoon. Because if we are not careful, if we are not able to embrace the grace of God daily, slowly, slowly, we might be forgetting the confession of our faith. And this forgotten confession might lead to our own destruction. Alawa, our misplaced passion. You know, the Athenians were very passionate people. They were very zealous. Napaka masigasig nila. Kaya lang yung kanilang zealousness and their passion was very misplaced. Because their eyes were not fixed on the one true God, but on the many gods surrounding them. They have made gods along the way, and the unknown God, the one true God, has become an unknown God, just one of the many gods around them. Sabi ni Apostle Paul, di ba, I, I have seen your religiosity. As I walk around and look carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. You are ignorant of the very thing you worship and this is what I am going to proclaim to you. They were zealous and passionate but their passion had become so misplaced that they became ignorant of the very thing that they worship. So we must have to be very careful with the things that we supposedly are doing for God as our offering of worship sa Kanya, that we will, that what we do will not lead people, people away from the faith. We have to be reminded every day that in everything, even as a church, kahit ng maraming mga simbahan sa kasalukuyan, ang ano nating maintindihan that we should always point people to Christ and not on programs. 
should always point people to Christ and not on personalities. We should always point people to Christ and not on performances. It never be that we hide God behind the programs that we do, behind the personalities and behind the performances in His own house, in His own temple, because that will crush the heart of God whom we say we worship. Because if we know Him, we know His attributes and His character, there are a lot of things that we are doing at the moment that definitely hindi na natin gagawin. Well, nating buhay, ating mga ministeryo, at kung papaano natin tinitingnan ang mga desisyon natin sa harap ng Panginoon. Because in all this, we will realize that what God wants from us is not the program we create, nor the personalities that we sometimes borderline worship and not the performances that we do. All He wants from us is a surrendered heart. End of the day, it was spoken in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks. God despises the superficial. Outward, God despises the show. Only cares about your heart. Only cares about my heart. Do pray that when God sees us, fixed on Him. It's focus on Him. Our ways are putting a smile back on God's face and that our actions are not becoming stumbling blocks to our fellows. Don't forget that the main thing that should happen to us when we go inside of the church is that our understanding of who God is gets deeper and deeper by the day. Started actions. You know, for the Athenians, it was just okay to have other gods. As long as they have created a space, an altar for the unknown God. The disregarded actions here, I am not referring to how we treat others, but as to how we disregard God, His nature, and his attributes in what we do. In verses 24 to 28a, we see here how Paul introduced the unknown God, the one true God to the Athenians. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needs anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else from one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did so so that they would seek him, perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. You know, these verses are Actually, theological, pangunawa natin sa mga katangian sa attributes ng ating Panginoon. You see here, the Apostle Paul was referring to God's existence, His omnipotence, and His sovereignty. That the unknown God exists, at least an unknown God for the Athenians. That He is all-powerful, He is omnipotent. Verses 24 to 26 and 28. Him being an all-powerful God and His sovereignty that God is in control of everything. And when we speak of God's attributes, there are a lot of attributes of God in the Scriptures that we need to decipher, to know, and to understand. But the thing is, we do not really know the character and the nature and even the attributes of God Himself. See, the attributes of God. It's the only way for us to have a deeper and a meaningful relationship with God is for us to understand His nature, His attributes, His character. 
nothing will be, will be supplementary to that. You see, the reason why there are a lot of professing Christians who do not enjoy their relationship with God is because they do not know God. Because they have not immersed themselves into seeking the very nature and the attributes of God. Maraming pagkakataon, hindi natin nauunawaan ang mga katangian ng Diyos na ating sinasamba, which makes Him nothing short of an unknown God to us. Because if we know God as a holy God, and that is His attribute, that is His character, we will run away from unholiness. If we know God as an omnipresent God, and that God and everything is in God's immediate presence, we will always have that God consciousness in us and that we will realize that nothing escapes the eyes and the presence of God and that we will not go to places and do things that will dishonor Him. Oh, that He is an omnipresent God and that He is a holy God. Or maybe you would just try to cut and pick yung mga attributes ng Panginoon na gusto natin that would fit us. We would want an omnipotent, all-powerful God to save our troubles, our issues, and to solve our problems and answer our prayers. But we do not want a sovereign God who takes full control of our lives because maybe He is not really the Lord of our lives. Kasig tayo para sa Diyos na gusto natin. Pero hindi para sa Diyos na kailangan natin. We just want a God that would suit our needs and wants. That is the case. Hindi ho natin kailangan ng Diyos. Kailangan natin magician. Remember that God cannot be mocked. Kahit kailanman maloloko ang Panginoon. Hindi natin kahit kailanman maloloko ang Diyos na sinasabi natin, sinasamba natin. Here's the question. The one true God still an unknown God to you. I honestly hope that the answer to this question for all of us is a big fat no. You see, when Christ was asked in John 17, 3 of what eternal life it is, what eternal life is, what he said, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. At ito ang buhay na walang hanggan, ang makilala kanila na iisang tunay na Diyos at si Kristo na iyong Inugo. I'm about to end our remember this. Jesus Christ is not a footnote in our testimony. Is not an afterthought in our Christian life. He is its main theme, the central figure in our spirituality and in our Christian walk. Our story his story. It's history itself. His story. Whenever we are jealous of the story of our lives, it be that our zealousness yung just na sinasabi natin, sinasamba natin, just na dapat araw-araw natin kinikilala. Araw na ginawa niya, mas lumalalim yung pagkakakilala natin sa Kanya. Yung pagkakakilala natin sa Kanya, that will usher us into being grateful. Ay ng Panginoon. God and we are not. ay mga nilikha ng Panginoon. For Him, for Him, 
grateful. This our way of being grateful sa kanya. We keep watch our relationship with God. Wala akong sagot na steady lang sa relasyon sa Panginoon. Dahil kapag yun ang sinabi natin, mahana tayo pare-pareho. Mayroon po tayong lahat. As we end our message this morning, as I said a while ago, our understanding of who God is in our lives should lead us to worship. Just to be grateful to Him, to be humble, and to just seek God and His attributes for all that He is. It be that our zealousness, yung atin pong kasigasigan, we focus on our one true God, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and our Redeemer.